Every year we have a tradition of having somebody extremely fancy come and remind us that books are also cool. <laughs> Last we were feeling a little bit insecure. And it's a true delight to have Natasha Leon here. <laughs> My 10, 20 year old self is screaming inside. Um, as many of you know, Natasha started her film career in Pee Wee's Playhouse, which led to roles in more than 50 films, including But I Am a Cheerleader, which is just the best movie, and Slums of Beverly Hills, which is also just the best movie. She stars as a series regular in Netflix's Orange is the New Black, a role for which she received an Emmy nomination. The own co-created upcoming Netflix series Russian Doll with Amy Poehler. She wrote and directed for the series, which stars her as Nadia, a young woman on a journey as the guest of honor at a seemingly inescapable party. You guys can leave it if you want. One night in New York City. Last year, Natasha made her directorial debut with the Kenzo film Kabiria Charity Chastity. She also wrote the screenplay for the film, which stars Rudolph, Fred Armisen, and Leslie Odom Jr., among others. Next year, she will be seen alongside Lucas Hedges and FKA Twigs in Alma Harrell and Shia LaBeouf's Honey Boy. Uh, before I turn things over, I'd like to say congratulations to each of tonight's honorees. Nana Kwame Ajay Brenya, Hana Lilith Asadi, Akweke Amazing, I'm sorry guys, I have like pronunciations and I'm just nervous. <laughs> Lydia Kiesling and Muriel Rothman Secker. Welcome to the National Book Foundation family. You are always, 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 always a family. <laughs> Celebrate them with me and welcome to the stage. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the 2018 5 under 35 ceremony. I'm gonna move these so I can see what I'm saying. <laughs> it's an honor to be here tonight celebrating the incredible work of these five debut fiction writers whose skin still has that beautiful under 35 tightness. <laughs> but by the end of this speech, you'll all be over 45. <laughs> it's a long speech, is what that means. <laughs> uh, as a rebellious teen, uh, I came up on John Fonte, Iceberg Slim, Henry Miller, Charles Bukowski, Dorothy Parker, and of course one of my favorites, Norman Mailer's Executioner Song. Uh, I developed a serious crush on Gary Gilmore in a way that really makes me now question my teenage moral compass. <laughs> Luckily, the cynical tough guys were balanced out by philosophical leanings, including this quote from Steppenwolf that illuminates what finding books felt like to my rotting, melodramatic teenage soul. <laughs> All of a sudden, there was a human being, a living human being, to shatter the death that had come over me like a glass case, and to put out a hand to me, a good and beautiful and warm hand. All of a sudden, a door was thrown open through which life came in. That's how it felt. <laughs> anyway, there were, um, these were some of the authors that made me feel safe and seen. My youth was shaped by them deeply. In adulthood, these voices were fine into Thomas Pynchon, Zadie Smith, Dennis Johnson, Richard Yates, Roberto Olanio, and John William Stoner in particular. Yeah. Um, showbiz literature spoke to me too, and no one communicated that better than Bud Schulberg and what makes Sammy run. <laughs> uh, except for maybe Gavin Lambert in Running Time and Inside Daisy Clover. Uh, although Scotty Bowers' full service was pretty high up there too, even if it was written like a tabloid magazine or run below, kind of hangers, Hollywood Babylon, who cares, it was a blast. <laughs> I liked that book a lot. Uh, Charles Lawton, his sandwich, uh, was a highlight. Many of these titles have played a significant part in molding who I am as a person, but um, the Nabat book's introduction to Jack Black's turn-of-the-century hobo memoir, You Can't Win, is a large part of how it came to be my all-time favorite and one of the most influential for me, and not only because it was already William Burroughs' favorite book. It says, To be a success under current definition is highly toxic. Wealth, fame, and power are a poison cocktail. That this era of triumphal capitalism enshrines the most dreary human pathologies like greed and self-interest as good and natural. That the winner's version of reality and history is deeply lame and soul-rotting stuff. Given this, it follows that truly interesting and meaningful lives and real adventure are only to be had on the margins of what Kenneth Rexroth called the social lie. 
It's with the dropouts, misfits, dissidents, renegades, and revolutionaries against the grain, between the cracks and amongst the enemies of the state that the good stuff can be found. Fortunately, there is a mighty underground river of testimony from the disaffected, a large cache of hidden history, of public secrets overlooked by the oppressive conventional wisdom that in a bat box aims to tap into. A little something is said against the crushed hopes, mountains of corpses, and commodification of everything. Actually, we think, this is the best thing Western civilization has going for itself. I agree. Um, <clears throat> the most uh, recent book I read was Tiari Jones's An American Marriage. And uh, it really did a number on me. I don't know if it's because of the amount of time I spent checking out by playing crossword puzzles on my cell phone or what, but I was crying like a baby half the time I was reading it. Uh, a strong recommend. Says that here, I wrote that. Uh, I realize uh, that uh, I've name checked a lot of very macho men today, which is my own issue to work through with my personal therapist. Uh, I don't actually have a therapist, I should let you know, so I won't be working through that. Uh, so I, wanna, I wanna say something to the women in the room uh, through a quote from Tayari's book that stuck with me. Uh, More women should be selfish, or else the world will trample you. Encouraging their work matters. We have to foster new voices in the creative world, and I'm so glad we have authors like the five honored here tonight who are pushing the boundaries of conventional fiction and are ushering in a whole new generation of enlightened readers. Congrats on this whole night, and uh, once again, to quote, you can't win. If you live with the wolves, you learn how to howl. So stick together, kids. Lord yeah. knows these times call for it more than ever. Uh, thanks for having me in your clubhouse. So, let's raise a glass, hopefully yours is in water, and a toast to these five writers and their exceptional books with many more to come. Woo!